I know of a hidden city that I think everyone has heard of, but most people think it's a fairy tale. Well, I believe it's true, and I want to show you why I believe in it. I learned about it in the last five years, and I know that I learned about it from the prophets of God. I heard about it on YouTube, but have read about it in the Bible. In Revelation, Jesus talks about the city of God in heaven called New Jerusalem. This is the city I'm talking about. Please stay with me here, and I will show you what I have seen of this hidden city. I didn't even know it was going to be hidden, and then at the end Jesus was going to reveal it, but that is what I have learned. He said to John, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So what, I, what interests me here is he said the city of his God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. So the city is going to come down from heaven. Second Esdras, chapter 7, verse 26, Ezra writes, For behold, the time will come when the signs which I have foretold to you will come to pass, that the city which now is not seen shall appear, and the land which is now hidden shall be disclosed and some other versions say openly displayed the land which is now hidden shall be openly displayed so it was hidden and then it's going to be openly displayed it's going to come down out of heaven from God second Baruch chapter 4 verse 1 says and the Lord said unto me this city shall be delivered up for a time and the people shall be chastened during that time and the world will not be given over to oblivion verse 2 says dost you think that this is that city of which I said on the palms of my hands have I graven you this building now built in your midst is not that which is revealed with me that which prepared beforehand here from the time when I took counsel to make paradise and showed Adam before he sinned but when he transgressed the commandment it was removed from him as also paradise and after these things I showed it to my servant Abraham by night among the portions of the victims and again also, I showed it to Moses on Mount Sinai when I showed to the likeness of the tabernacle and all its vessels. And now, behold, it is preserved with me as paradise. Go, therefore, and do as I command you. And Baruch writes, this is chapter 5, verse 1. And I answered and said, So then I am destined to grieve for Zion. For your enemies will come to this place and pollute your sanctuary and lead your inheritance into captivity and make themselves masters of those whom you have loved and they will depart again to the place of their idols and will boast before them. So then in the same book, Second Esdras, Ezra writes in chapter 13 verse 29 behold the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth and bewilderment of mind shall come over those who dwell on the earth and they shall plan to make war against one another city against city place against place people against people and kingdom against kingdom 
And when these things come to pass, that the signs occur which I showed you before, then my son will be revealed, whom you saw as a man coming up from the sea. And when all the nations hear his voice, every man shall leave his own land and the warfare that they have against one another, and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as you saw, desiring to come and conquer him. But he will stand on the top of Mount Zion, and Zion will come and be made manifest to all people, prepared and built as you saw the mountain carved without hands. So that was Ezra seeing a vision of the Son of God standing on Mount Zion. So Mount Zion is where the city is. Uh, Isaiah 2 verses 2 through 5 And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. And in Zechariah chapter 8, verses 3 through 8, it says, Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth in the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes? Saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. So this is talking about the end days where this hidden city will be made manifest and it will actually come down out of heaven from God. And the time we're living in right now could be those end of days. It could be those last days. Because there is a city or a plot of land or whatever you want to call it coming down out of heaven from God right now Ezekiel 20 verses 37 through 44 and I will cause you to pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, saith the Lord God, go ye, serve ye every one of his idols and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name, no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and your firstfruits of your oblations with all your holy things. 
I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel into the country for which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers and there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have been defiled and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought you for my name's sake not according to your wicked ways nor according to your corrupt doings O ye house of Israel saith the Lord God and then Micah chapter 4 verses 1 through 10 but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it and many nations shall come and say come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth for of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nations shall not lift up a sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree and none shall make them afraid for the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it for all people will walk every one in the name of his God and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever in that day saith the Lord will I assemble her that halteth and I will gather her that is driven out and her that I have afflicted and I will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast far off a strong nation and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughters of Jerusalem. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth of, out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the land of thine enemies. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, Let her be defiled, and let our eye look upon Zion. Psalm 48 verse 1 Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Isaiah 25 verse 6 And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. Verse 7, And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. Isaiah 40 verse 9, O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest, bringest good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Isaiah 56 verse 7 Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Okay, now I'm just going to speak about this from my heart in the last five years I have learned about a city and it 
it was hidden and it's not hidden anymore many people in the world in the last five years have seen and believe in a new heaven and a new earth one that was not built with hands the gospel of john chapter 2 verse 13 it says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the changers of money, sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake, of the temple of his body when therefore he was risen from the dead his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said and in Ezra's vision in 2nd Ezra chapter 13 he saw a man flying with the clouds of heaven which is Jesus and wherever he turned his face to look, everything under his gaze trembled. And whenever his voice issued from his mouth, all who heard his voice melted as wax melts when it feels the fire. And there was an innumerable multitude that gathered against him from the four winds of heaven to make war against him. And Ezra looked and in... 13 verse 6 it says and I looked and behold he carved out for himself a great mountain and flew up onto it and I tried to see the region or place from which the mountain was carved but I could not now think about that Ezra couldn't see where it was because it was hidden it was hidden and Ezra himself said that in the end days that the land that was now hit that was hidden at that time would be openly displayed think of the last five years what has been revealed to many of us and what has been a conversation uh, throughout the entire world concerning a certain kind of land a certain place there is a land and a city that was hidden that is not hidden anymore which brings me to another topic of discussion that is related but most people don't realize what it is and I'm talking about the earth the earth being changed or transformed so I want to go over some verses that foretell the earth changing and I might even dare to say the shape of the earth being unhidden or being seen for the first time and I truly believe that this is happening right now so in 2nd Esdras chapter 6 verses 11 through 16 I answered Supreme Lord if only you looked so favorable upon me that you would show your servant your final signs which you showed me in part on a previous night he answered get up on your feet you'll hear a loud echoing voice don't be afraid if the place on which you stand is greatly moved while the voice is speaking since the word concerns the end and since the foundations of the earth will understand that the speech is about them 
The place will tremble and shake because it knows that it is destined to be transformed. Enoch chapter 45 verses 4 through 5 says, Then will I cause mine elect one, that's Jesus, to dwell among them, and I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. And I will transform the earth and make it a blessing. And I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it. But the sinners and evildoers shall not set foot thereon. That's a serious verse. That's a very serious verse. Because this is saying that sinners and evildoers will not set foot in New Jerusalem. And he's going to transform the earth and make it a blessing and transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. In Baruch chapter 5 verse 7, it says, For God hath appointed that every high hill and banks of long continuance should be cast down and valleys filled up to make even the ground that Israel may go safely in the glory of God. Isaiah 40 verses 4 through 5 says, Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And John the Baptist quotes Isaiah 40 there in uh, Luke chapter 3 verses 5 through 6 every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways shall be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God so is there something going on here in our world in the last five years that people aren't quite understanding to be what it actually is? Um, in Baruch chapter 2 verses 34 and 35 it says, And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. So keep in mind this is talking about land. Second Baruch chapter 14 verse 13. On this account also these without fear leave this world. And trusting with joy, they hope to receive the world which you have promised them. Second Baruch 51 verse 8 For they shall behold the world which is now invisible to them. And they shall behold the time which is now hidden from them. This is that hidden city I'm talking about, guys. And I know I already read this, but I'm reading it again. Second Ezra chapter chapter 7 verse 26 for behold the time will come when the signs which I have foretold you will come to pass that the city which is now not seen shall appear and the land which is now hidden shall be disclosed Ezekiel 37 verse 14 and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Zechariah 8 verse 3 says, Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. In Hebrews 11 verses 8 through 10, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called 
to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of that same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. I think we found that city. And I believe in it. And it's coming down out of heaven from God. I'm not trying to change anything about what you believe. I'm just sharing with you and showing you what I learned that has changed how I believe, has changed what I believe. And I think we live in the time that the prophets wrote about. So I really don't think that there's much more of an important thing than for a person to repent and to turn away from something that was also prophesied to happen in the end. And that is that the Gentiles would be treading underfoot this city, this hidden city. And to keep it simple, kind of simple, the city that I'm in search of, the one that I'm telling you about and reading about and learning about in this video now, that city's up in the sky. And Jesus is standing on Mount Zion, uttering his voice, I believe. And there's a war happening in that city because of the Gentiles treading it underfoot. In Enoch 56, it says that the fallen angels would return and would tread underfoot the land of his elect ones and that the city of his righteous ones would become a threshing floor and a highway for them. Space exploration. That's what I mean when I say we need to repent. Turn away from that. It's a lie. It's darkness. And it condemns. It defiles us because believing in planets, that they're places to go, that isn't what Jesus declared from the beginning. And all throughout time, God has not left his sanctuary or his temple, and they're up in heaven. Literally. So that's what I mean. Space exploration is the shout lifted up against God. And it's the city of Babylon. Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon. So all I can say is what I've learned in the last five years, I've learned the things I've learned so that I can come out of her, my people. That's what I've been doing. And I encourage you to also come out of her. Don't partake in her sins because they've reached up to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities and his wrath is upon us. Look at the world. So I want you to have a good day 
and thank you for listening and please consider these things and please consider this city that I'm able to uh, learn about and see thank you have a good day